is the Lord God Almighty. Make his path straight. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Israel. Make straight his path in the wilderness. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Jesus Christ. Your name is Holy Spirit. Let his light shine. Let his light shine in the darkness. My love and greetings to each and every one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior. His name is Jesus. My name is David Turner, and I want to welcome you to this week's program, The Gospel is the Power. This week, God has placed a very special message upon my heart. It is entitled, the power of the word when demonstrated in the spirit. Oh, child of God, I encourage you, listen, open the spiritual inward eye of your heart. You will be blessed in a mighty way today. Amen. When they brought this woman to Jesus, Jesus already knew He's the God who declares the end from the beginning, Isaiah 46.10. He knew what this woman had done. He also knew the hearts of the Pharisees who wanted to see her stoned, condemned and stoned. Jesus kneels down and he's writing in the sand. Precious child of God, what was Jesus writing? Book of Daniel, chapter 5, verse 5 to 10. He's writing the judgment of the enemies of God. The judgment of the enemies of God. Not the woman who committed adultery. Not even the Pharisees. The devil. He's writing the judgment against the devil. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 8, who's constantly making the people to sin and is operating through the people. God is never mad at the people. It's the enemy within the people. Amen? Amen. This is why Jesus came to deliver. Jesus is writing on the ground the, with his finger. He's already casting out the demons from the demons of adultery and the demons of all these people where the devil wants to murder and destroy. The Bible says in Luke eleven twenty. If I cast out demons by the finger of God, the kingdom of God has come. Amen? Amen? Jesus is already bringing the kingdom. Jesus speaks and he says, you know it. Whosoever has no sin, cast the first stone. What happened? All the people, one by one, they started to leave. So finally, they're all gone. Jesus Christ says to this woman, where are your accusers? Is there none who condemn you? She said something very significant. She said, no one, Lord. Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. The moment this woman said, Lord, no one, Lord, she was saved. With the one word, Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Romans 10, verse 9, if you believe in your heart, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord, you are saved. All who call upon the name of the Lord, Romans 10, 13, shall be saved. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Ephesians 2, verse 8, we are saved by grace through faith. Not because of our works, not anything else. By recognizing that Jesus Christ is Lord, 
we are saved. Amen. Hallelujah. When Jesus Christ is in us, Romans 6, 14, sin shall not have dominion over your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Nobody said you'll never sin, but sin will not have dominion over you. See, the entrance of the word brings the light. Jesus Christ, John 8, 12, he is the light. The entrance of his word brought the light. This woman was walking in darkness, but when Jesus Christ came, he brought the light. Same way, John 1, 4, John 8, 12, 1 John 1, 12, 5, in all the places, Jesus Christ is the light. When you walk with Jesus Christ in you, the light will be in you. You will be able to demonstrate the power of the word with the Holy Spirit in your life. He will bring you the salvation, and the salvation of the Lord will flow not only into your life, but the people around you. Amen? Amen. Amen. When you walk in the power of the word. Hallelujah. The entrance of the light also brings the healing in our life. Amen? It brings the healing. Our God is a covenant God. His covenant, Exodus 15, 26, he says, I am the Lord who healeth thee. Hallelujah. So many times people are alive. People are living, but they're not living an abundant life. But Jesus doesn't want us to just exist. He wants you to have an abundant life. He doesn't want people to be filled with the devil. That's why the Bible says, Acts 10, 38, Jesus Christ came so that he could heal the sick and deliver those oppressed by the devil. That's why I was rejoicing last night, every time, because when I see Jesus setting his people free, they can now live a much more abundant life, not being attacked by the devil. This is what he came to do. It's the living word manifest right in front of us. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Psalm 66, Verse 12, sorry, I had to look that up. That's my joke. He always confirms, don't tell jokes. Okay, praise the Lord. Psalm 66, verse 12, the Bible says, You may have gone through the fire and through the water, but I will take you to a place of abundance. Somebody say amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands. Thank you, Jesus. He wants to take you to that place of abundance. Living is not enough. He wants you to have the abundant life. We see in the Bible, book of John, chapter 5, verse 1 through 14, there is a man. He's alive. He's been lame for 38 years. He's laying at the pool of Bethesda. There is life in him, but it is not an abundant life. But God Almighty sees him. Jesus Christ is walking by the pool and he sees as he's sojourning this man. You see, Jesus always sees what the Father is doing. There were many people sick there that day, but there was one thing God was doing that day. And Jesus saw it. He went to this man. The same way Jesus Christ, he is El Roy. Genesis 16, 13, he is the God who sees. He sees you today in your infirmity, in your lack of abundance, in everything that you're needing. Amen. He came to this man, 38-year lame man. This man is complaining. Jesus asked him the question, do you want to be made well? I always say, I thought that was such a silly question. Doesn't everyone who's possessed, everyone who's sick, don't they want to be made well? It's not true. Somebody told me something last night after the meeting. They said it was shocking when I asked for people with witchcraft how many people came forward. Not because they thought no one had witchcraft. In fact, I only hear from the Lord and I do what he says. It didn't dawn on me. Not only is there an issue sometimes from people who have African descent where there's a lot of witchcraft, but we're in Boston right near Salem where all the witchcraft took place. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit, th you know, it's, I'm a little slow. Sometimes the Lord has to bang me with the frying pan. And then afterwards I go, oh, no wonder. But you know what this person said? They were amazed at how many people humbled themselves and came forward. Because they were saying, 
It's like taboo where everybody knows it exists, but nobody talks about it. And I'm thinking, what? I'm thinking if I had that devil attacking me, I'd be running. I don't care who is watching. If I'm the pastor, I'm running for the front, and I'm going to be the first one to kneel down. At least, you know what? What is everyone, am I kidding everyone? Does everyone think because I have a badge that says pastor, I'm so holy and perfect that I don't have any issues, the devil never touches me? Are you kidding me? I'd rather be the first one to kneel down and let everyone go, wow, my pastor's transparent. Because we all know everybody has sin, at least he acknowledges his. Praise the Lord, I'd be happier to go to that church. Amen? I do love, by the way, I don't, I'm not big on titles. I don't, you know, everyone wants to be apostle this and pastor that and, you know, tongue talking Terry. You know, I tell people, call me brother, call me servant, although I will say, when I do come to African churches, I do love the term man of God. I love it. My, my wife shortens it. She just calls me the Mog, M-O-G, so... Praise the Lord. But I'm just having some fun with that. But the thing is, it is kind of neat. However, because that's what I dream to be, a true man of God. Amen? And that is a worthy title. Without lifting yourself up, it's a desire for the Lord to do it. But the point is this. The point is that why are people, everyone knows they're at the pool of Bethesda, they're all sick. Why is everyone pretending not to be sick? Better we want to come to Jesus and be set free. Who are we worried about looking at? Oh my God, I'm an elder in the church. Maybe they won't want me to be an elder. Well, I got to tell you, if they don't want me to be an elder because I got this, I'm thinking they'd rather me be set free and then I'd be a better elder. Right? It must be the elephant under the rug because what do you think? No, whatever you've got, you think nobody's noticed it? We're pretending. We have to be real. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm a healing evangelist, but I got to tell you, when my spiritual father comes and I'm praying and sometimes something's not healed in me, I'm the one in the front of the line. What are you, oh, I'm a healing evangelist. I'm going to look crazy if I'm up asking for healing. You know, people think a healing evangelist never gets sick. I get more attacks than anybody. Devils jump off of people. In the early days when I would pray for sicknesses, I'd pray for a guy, he'd have a paralyzed leg. The devil would jump off him and jump on me, and for three days, oh, Lord, oh, God. And he would get on me, and they would paralyze my leg. I'm not kidding you. And I'd fight for three days to get set free. We pray all the time as a healing evangelist. You get so many attacks, the devil comes after you. But I always know God is faithful. I don't so much anymore. God is so good. He protects me the more you build your spiritual immunity. He usually goes after the people around me, but not myself. Hallelujah. Everything he can, my business, anything. So pray for our ministry. Praise the Lord. Amen. We pray for so many we love when you pray for us too. Do you want to be made well? Jesus said. And I couldn't believe why Jesus asked that until I started a healing ministry and I realized how many people, they're more stuck in who they are, where they are, who's watching them, every, every reason, instead of wanting to just get rid of it and walk whole. This man, he complained, I want to be well, but every time they stir the waters where the angel would stir the water and someone would get healed, someone gets in before me, I can't get healed. He was so busy complaining, looking under the water, his author and finisher of his faith, Hebrews 12, 2, Jesus Christ is standing right there. And he's missing it. So many times, even in meetings, people, oh God, I need you. God, I need a miracle. How many people are begging for the miracle of God, but where are they all tonight? Amen? Where are the people? Oh, but the waters. How many people? Well, you don't need the waters. You need to come when God is calling. Hallelujah. This man, Jesus said, the word of God, he said, rise up. He cut off the bands of sin around his neck. And he told this man to rise up off his mat. Immediately, this man was able to get up. 38 years, the mat carried this man one word from Jesus Christ, and he got up and he carried the mat. Amen? Amen? Why? Because the word is powerful. When we obey the word, when we obey Jesus, 
God says, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 11, 7, he says, obey my word. And in Jeremiah 1, 12, he says, I will hasten my word when, you, when we obey. What does it mean he'll hasten his word? We know the word is Jesus Christ. It means he'll hasten, he'll send Jesus in a hurry. The moment we obey, he'll send the word Jesus. What does Psalm 107, 20 say? It says, I will send my word and heal you. Jesus Christ is the word. He'll send Jesus to heal you the moment we obey. The word came to this man, and in one moment, 38 years of sickness, he's healed. I tell you tonight, you come running to Jesus, and in one minute, the word can heal you. Amen? Amen? This man was able to go when he obeyed the word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last thing I want to tell you tonight. We must believe Jesus for his work's sake. For his work's sake. The Bible tells us in the book of John, Boy, I don't go blank on this verse. Give me one second. John 14, verse 10 to 12. John 10, verse 38. Every once in a while I have those brain freezes where you know a verse a thousand times and it doesn't come. It's like, hold on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Usually if I ever say a verse wrong, literally it's like someone slammed the brakes. The Holy Spirit will just stop me right in my tracks and I go, Wait a second, and then he'll give it back. So, John 14, verse 10 to 12, and John chapter 10, verse 38. We see in those places, Jesus Christ said, I don't come on my own authority, and I don't speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. Amen? So what does it mean? It means that Jesus went on to say, he says, I am in the Father. My Father is in me. He said, believe the works that I do, for they testify that the, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Amen? Amen. So because the Father was in him, he was able to do the works, and we were able to see the great works of God. This is what it means. So because the Father was in him, we see book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 32 to 34. Jesus was able to say, Ephetha. It means, be open. And we see the person who was deaf and mute was immediately able to hear. Because the Father was in him, he was in the Father, and the Father was in him. We see in the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 46 to verse 52, when blind Bartimaeus cried out, Jesus, son of David, have the mercy upon me. What happened? He was calling on the covenant promise, Isaiah 55, verse 3, of God promising sure mercy to the house of David. Because of that, the Father who was in Jesus Christ was able to say, according to your faith, receive your sight. And the blind man, blind Bartimaeus, was able to re receive his sight. Because the Father was in him. Again, we see John 5, verse 1 to 10 how he came past the pool of Bethesda. He was able to see what the father was doing. He was able to come up to this man and he was able to tell him to rise up and walk and the man was able to rise up and walk. Amen. Same way in our lives, when the father is in us and dwells in us by the Holy Spirit, we too can demonstrate the power of the word by the Spirit of God because he is in us, because we have the relationship, the intimate relationship with the Heavenly Father by the Holy Spirit. And this is why Jesus Christ said in John 14, verse 12, he said, if you believe me, greater works will you do than I did. Amen? Amen? We can do this because it's the Holy Spirit connecting us to the Father and Son, doing the work through our lives. We are not doing it ourselves. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Somebody clap your hands and give glory to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're finishing right now, but I want to tell you, I want to tell you, the Bible says, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you noticed, I shared a couple Bible verses tonight, the word of God, to build your faith so that you will believe and come forward. I already know, if somebody doesn't get healed, I'm not going, oh my God, was there any power in me? It's like a television. You have a television in your house. If the television is off, does that mean there's no power coming to the TV? The cable's on, the plug's in the outlet. There's power, but there's no picture. But the moment you turn on the switch, it's right there for you. Well, it's the same way with the kingdom of God. I already know the power for healing is present tonight, and God is going to heal and deliver through me. Whether you get it or not depends on if you want to turn on the switch. Don't condemn yourself. It also does, don't hear what I'm not saying. It doesn't mean if somebody doesn't receive an instant miracle tonight that they weren't standing in faith. All that faith nonsense. There's people who swing to the other side. Oh, brother, you don't have any faith. So that's why you didn't get healed. That is nonsense. I want to tell you right now, you know what that is? That's an excuse where one preacher who's a child of God doesn't want to be embarrassed and think, I don't have the power, so he's putting it back on you so no one should think he didn't have the power. I know I have the power, so I don't have to blame you if you don't get healed. There's many reasons for sickness. Sin in our lives, Psalm 38, verse 3, 5, and 7 can cause sickness. The devil can bring sickness. Job 2, verse 4, Job, and Luke 13, verse 16. Generational curses can bring sickness. The Bible tells us in Lamentations 5, verse 7, the Bible tells us that, that overworking our bodies can cause sickness. So many things. The moment you try to declare what it is on somebody else, you're trying to play God. We should check all these things in our lives. Last night, I cast out the devil in a couple people. Very easily, I could have just moved on, but the Holy Spirit quickened me. There were other spirits. If I didn't cast them out, that person wouldn't have been delivered. By the grace of God, the Lord showed me. If we don't call a spirit by name, it doesn't have to come out. Maybe that person was prayed for. It doesn't mean they're delivered. That's why I wait until the Holy Spirit tells me they're delivered. Sometimes people will still manifest for an hour. Because it's like a residue, it's come out of them, but their body is so used to doing a certain thing that it tends to keep doing it. A healing can take time. A miracle is instant. We see both. Don't put God in a box. He's working on your behalf. We don't know why when Daniel prayed, God answered instantly, it took 21 days. Don't think I'm not healed. If you don't feel it instantly, you test it, many people will have miracles. If it's not, you believe for your healing. Many people will come back the next day or in a week. We get emails. Three days later, it went away. The sickness was gone. So many people with uh, illnesses that cannot be cured, ir uncurable illnesses, I get emails all the time, they're cured in the name of Jesus. You'll be believing Jesus Christ tonight. I tell you right now, the word of God, the Bible says in Psalm 62, verse 11, God spoke once, twice I heard, the power belongs to God. The power belongs to God. God's word is mighty and powerful. And when we, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we can demonstrate the power of that word by his spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands and give glory to Jesus Christ. In April of this past year, I was hit by an automobile at 40 miles per hour, and they told me that I wouldn't walk or be able to stand for about 12 to 18 months at least. Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. oh God, God, according to her faith, Hallelujah. she said she's ready to walk. No fear, no fear. No fear. Lord Jesus, I feel your power right now going right through my hand. As the swelling is already gone and she came to give you the testimony, I declare she will walk. She does not need this chair. She needs you, Jesus. Right now, rise up and walk. Power of God. 
in the name of Jesus, put your weight. Hold my hands. Power of God is upon you in the name of Jesus. Slowly, just look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. And um, I stood up for the first time. Were you discouraged at all that you weren't able to walk? No. No. Tell me, you just... I, I wasn't discouraged because of the presence that I felt, the closeness that I felt with the Lord that night. And, um, yeah, I just knew that I would walk again soon. Tell me what happened after that. Um, after that, you had a, a revival in Scottsdale. I think it was like in November. And I, I attended that one, and I came in my wheelchair because, you know, I could stand, but I still wasn't able to walk. Um, and you began praying, and you asked me to stand and believe in God, trust and believe. And I did, and I started taking a few steps. Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. And I started taking a few steps, and I've been walking ever since. I pushed my wheelchair. I like to tell everyone that. I pushed my wheelchair out of the service that evening. Yeah. When I walked through the door of my home, my daughter just broke down in tears. She couldn't believe it. Thank you for watching our message this week. Won't you join us again next week for more of the gospel? is the power. Big is Make straight his path in the wilderness. Let his light shine. Let his light shine.